Ooh, wow. Listen, listen. If there is something positive that I could say about Ryan Garcia right now, and I am going to say something very positive about Ryan Garcia, this kid can promote a fight, man. Bottom line, this kid can promote a fight, okay? And he is actually teaching a lesson in fight promotion, in my opinion, right this second. Because I literally am realizing, like, there is no room for apologies in this game, you know? Like, I'm at least, like, on the public side. Because right, <laughs> a person steps up onto the way, you know, onto the scale for a championship boxing title fight and is three and a half pounds overweight. If there has ever been a situation where, of course, it's like, dude, I mean, time to apologize. This is it, man. Like, this is it. And Ryan not only is not apologizing, he is going hard in the paint to the point where it makes me want to watch the fight more, dude. Straight up, dude. It's like... This kid can promote a fight, bottom line. So we're going to look at what he did. Uh, we're going to look at what he said. And uh, then I'm going to show you some other stuff, uh, some other some other fun stuff that we'll look at uh, throughout this, this live stream. You know what I mean? But, uh, dude, if Ryan, if Ryan wins this fight, I am going to laugh so hard. When I did the first video, so, like, so I did the uh, – Brian, thank you very much, good sir. I appreciate you, dog. Uh, so when I first did my video about this, Rusty Moore, thank you. What's up, Jesse? Real one, my guy. Love the channel. Uh, that said, I got 15 on Haney by DQ. It pays you 500. Dude, by DQ. That's an interesting bet, man. That is an interesting bet. I don't, I don't hate that bet at all. Thank you for the super chat, good sir. Mark, welcome. Uh, thank you for, uh, hi from Maryland. Dude, I, I don't know if I know anyone that lives in Maryland except for you. So you got, do you have exclusive, uh, exclusive status in my social circle, my guy? Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so this is what I was going to say. So when I did my video about this and I did a, I did a good video about this right out of the gate. I was in a good mood, man. Um, so, uh, when I did the video about this earlier, I said that, uh, I didn't think Ryan deserved to win now because he didn't take it serious and that his team is outing him as having been drinking and not training and all that, you know? And I was like, what's up, Vincent? Thank you very much. Uh, from Australia. What's up, Peter? Thank you very much. So I said, like, he didn't take this seriously enough. He has to own it. You know, he's drinking and partying and not training. It's bullshit, you know? But when he did what he did on... Uh, when he did what he did here on Twitter that we're going to go through in a second, I've got to be honest, man. There's a level of, uh, what's the right way to put this? I'm rooting for him in the way that you root for like chaos, you know, where like the Joker in the dark Knight is like, just like when he lights the billion dollars on fire in front of all the guys. And he's like, we, and, and they're like, some people just want to watch the world burn. That's how I feel watching. I'm like, dude, I just want to see the world burn right now. Like if, if Ryan Garcia wins, given the chaos leading up to this thing, he misses by 3.2 pounds. He gives up his opportunity to win the title. He has to pay Devin Haney $2 million before he steps in the ring. If he wins, dude, it would be so hilarious, man. Um, What do I tell my, I'm like, look, man, make me look like a mix between the schmo and Michael Bisbing. He's all, I don't know who those people are. I'm like, just wing it, dog. Um, Sweden, what's up, Stefan? What's up, Jake? Love you too, brother. And really love you, Raul. That's a long time ago, man. I appreciate you, dude. Um, why doesn't, this is an excellent question, Cade. I agree with you 100%. They should have done, they should have done the fucking Dustin Poirier type fight in Louisiana 100%. Ronan living rent free in your head. Huh? I don't know what I have no idea what that means, dude. <laughs> I literally have absolutely no idea what that means. Um, so I look like Smimanim. I look like Smimanim. I assume that means Eminem. I am way less angry than Eminem, dude. And em dude, Eminem used to be cool. Remember when Eminem was cool? He's not, man. What's up, Anthony? He used to be cool. 
He's not. He's not. He's got TDS and it's embarrassing, you know, very embarrassing. Okay. So let me show you what we're talking about though here. Um, all right. So Ryan Garcia here four hours ago, time to weigh in. He's sucking in his cheeks on purpose and he def, I mean, like this is like, this is, this is me sucking in my cheeks on purpose. Absolutely. For 100% sure. He's doing a duck face, right? Uh, and whatever this is like first thing i thought of wait let me see what this is yeah exactly this guy's like first thing i thought of is you sucking in i feel great despite how i look right so this is four hours ago two hours ago so this is after he missed right this is after he missed weight i uh, he's like actually 1.5 wait what's he replying to i i don't know three pounds ain't nothing stop crying what? What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Like, what on earth are you talking about? Three pounds ain't nothing. Stop crying. It's like, whoa, I mean, it means you can't win the title. So it seems like something. Of course he knew he wasn't. Exactly. Exactly, Lena. He, of course he knew he wasn't going to make weight, right? So he says, three pounds ain't nothing. Stop crying. And I saw that. I was like, no way. I was like, no way. So then Alex, my buddy, Alex Pickus sent me this and he's like, check this out, bro. He says, I feel great. And now I got a three pound advantage. Let's go. Winners do what they have to do. I'm still sharp. He fucking made it out. He's like, he, he did it on purpose. That is so bananas, dude. That is so bananas, dude. Hang on for one second. Is that on my... Hold on. I don't know. There's something on my side that doesn't look right, and I can't tell if it's on my camera or my screen. Anyway, whatever. Uh, I don't know. Okay, look. So let me just say one thing about, about this, dude. Janny, thank you very much. Dude, I cut three pounds this morning. But I wasn't sucked up yet, you know. Uh, so I think we can learn from Ryan Garcia's don't do meth. So one thing I was going to say, dude, if he was doing meth, he probably would have made weight. He probably should have been doing meth or coke because then he would have made weight, man. You know? Um. So, yeah. It's my camera. Dude, what the fuck, man? Hang on. Ugh. We'll find out. I don't know. I don't know which one did it, but it's fixed. All right. So, um, yeah, you know, I'm just going to put you in timeout, dude. You're just going to go in timeout. You go, you go think about it, mountain man. You go think, you go think about it. Uh, so what's up, Jake? How are you, sir? You really believe that? You think Eminem would smoke me in a fight? That would be a horrendous bet on your part. I would fucking smash Eminem into a million pieces standing i'd kick his leg twice he would never walk again if he tried to take it to the ground i'd strangle him in 10 seconds that is the fastest victory in human history we can definitely try that out he can uh you know he can cry baby about it after he can write a bunch of battle raps about it after and dude i, I fuck man i is a massive eminem fan he turned into a fucking political cry baby it's like shut up eminem stop talking politics you don't know what the fuck you're talking about anywho um so what else are we talking about? Um, okay, so yeah, so he says he's got a three pound advantage. And then he's like, belts don't feed your family. Uh, right. But you lost $2 million for missing weight, bro. Like, does that feed your fucking family? And then it, Fuck all that Viva Mexico. We're leaving with his head. 
belts will always be there. What are you talking about, dude? Like, what on earth are you talking about? You missed, wait, okay. Look at this, dude. Why should I force myself to make weight so we can, so I can be weak? Nah, I'm here to win. That's it. So he's straight up, he's just like, he's like, yeah, man. He's like, I mean, I, I just didn't want to push myself to make weight, man. Like, this is insane. This is fucking crazy. This is totally crazy. This is insane. This is fucking crazy. I have never, ever, ever seen anyone do this after missing weight. This is fucking bananas. Do I think he's on Adderall? I have no idea. Dude. I honestly have no idea. Wait, wait, hang on. Okay, 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 hang on. Uh, oh, wait, I missed it. Sorry, Nicholas, you missed all the... Re okay, so a quick recap. Ryan Garcia went to go weigh in this morning, okay? All, all indications on Twitter, as I will show you here, were like, he's ready to go, right? Hang on. Look at it. He's like, here we go, bro. We're going to weigh in. It's time. We're going to do this shit. It's on. So you look at this, and it's like, all right, I'm ready to go. Time to weigh in. Two hours later, he missed weight by three and a half pounds. Three and a half pounds. He's It's at 140, right? And then every single thing he's done after that is he's acting like he missed weight on purpose. <laughs> oh, my God. He's acting like he missed fucking weight on purpose, dude. It's so funny. Like, I'm serious. Like, I'm not being, I'm not, like, joking. This is hilarious. I'm rooting for him now because of this nonsense. Just because I want to see the world burn, you know? It's absurd. This is absurd. This is absurd. Why would I force myself to make weight so I can be weak? Like, he's just like, yeah, dude, I'm a prize fighter. We're fighting for the belt at 140. But like, what, are you serious? Why would I force myself to make one? Hey, dude, why don't you come in at one fucking 90 then, dude? You know what I mean? Like, what are you talking? What are we talking about? Why would I force myself to make weight, man? Okay, so also, very important point uh, that I will show you in a second. Oh, this one too. My balls got heavy, dog, and get, and back gained too much muscle from carrying the promo. And my fingers got stronger from all the tweets. Damn, he's fucking hilarious. He is completely batshit, but hilarious, dude. Hilarious. Did you guys see this video that I did? Uh, did you guys see this video that I did where I showed this promo? This is so funny, man. Like, I don't care what anybody says. This is fucking hilarious. Pretty with Diddy, it's like, you don't even pay attention to what the f*** he's saying. Bro. At the end of the day, once once your booty hole got tickled, it's over. But what are we going to see from Ryan Garcia? None of that f It's going to be light work for me. Another day in the office. It's going to be one of those things where you're just like, yo, hold my beer, watch this. <laughs> I'm saying he's... Those other runners that we can't even name. Who's the second fastest runner in the world? We don't know. My step into NYC is going to be crazy. And then we're going to light one up right after. 420, baby. What am I doing in the rain? After that, I'm like, what's next? You know, hit up a club, do something. You know, I'm not even going to be worried that I just knocked somebody out and became a WBC champion. I, I do appreciate it, though. Shout out WBC. Dude, he's yeah. so much cooler than I thought. Way more game than I thought. But he has like a hundred times more game than I thought. I thought he was crazy. Maybe he really was just acting crazy. Nope. And if he was, he's a nope. genius. This is hilarious. No, it's he's not actually that crazy. Devin Haney's stressing the f out. No. Why do you think he's stressing? Oh, he's probably with his dad just scratching his head. I'm scared, Dad. He's talking about Diddy again. <laughs> Are you kidding about anything that Devin was saying or his workout last week? <laughs> he straight up said, once you've had your booty hole tickled, yeah. then it's kind of over from there. I'm serious. Is that not one of the funniest yeah, programs I've ever seen? It's like, it's like the know. best part of this, for sure. The best part of that is when he's like, who's the second fastest runner in the world? We don't know. Like, that's fucking legit comedy. Like, that's that he's actually like a funny guy. That's fucking hilarious, dude. Let's watch it one more time. Because it's that funny, and then we'll talk about how he's totally batshit. I don't even pay attention to what the f he's saying. Bro. At the end of the day, once once your booty hole got tickled, it's over. But what are we going to see from Ryan Garcia? None of that. F it's going to be light work for me. Another day in the office. It's going to be one of those things where you're just like, yo, hold my beer, watch this. I'm Usain. <laughs> he's 
those other runners that we can't even name. Who's the second fastest runner in the world? We don't know. Not stepping to NYC is going to be crazy. And then we're going to light one up right after. 420, baby. What might do it in the rain? After that, I'm like. The other part that's so funny is when he's like, he's st hey, he's stressing. He's always, always talking about Diddy again. It's next, you know, hit up a club, do something. You know, I'm not even going to be worried that I just knocked somebody out and became a WBC champion. I, I do appreciate it, though. Shout out WBC. Dude, he has way more game than I thought. But he has like a hundred times out more game than I thought. I thought he was crazy. Maybe he really was just acting crazy. And if he was, he's a genius. This is hilarious. It's not even over, dude. Devin Haney is stressing the f out. No. Why do you think he's stressing? Oh, he's probably with his dad just f scratching his head like, I'm scared, dad. He's talking about Diddy again. Are you kidding? <laughs> dude. Oh, my God. That is so fucking funny, man. That is so funny. So uh, it is super disrespectful, 100%. It's absurd, you know? Uh, wait, hang on. Obviously, you can't think three pounds is a big deal considering you don't think three inches is a big deal when you say you're five, ten, you it. Oh, God, you're going on fucking timeout for that dumb shit. Don't pretend to be putting in a serious comp. What the hell's up with my hair? <gasps> My hair got fucked up. Jesus, you guys putting this bullshit in my chat and it fucked my hair up. You time out. Sit in time out. You think about what you did, idiot. Uh, anyway, so, uh, oh my God, that is so fucking funny, man. So let's go back to his Twitter again. Um, and where'd it go? Oh yeah, here we go. So here's his Twitter this is his take on why he missed weight. His balls got too heavy uh, and he back gained too much muscle from carrying the promo and his fingers got stronger from all the tweets. He's funny, dude. He's funny. If he ends up winning, it's going to be, I don't even know. Like, how do you even interpret that? If you would dude, you know what? Let me look at, I, I'm going to, let's look up what the, the odds are right now on him winning, because I bet you, I bet you they're pretty long. Um, Dude, like, I'm okay. I have an actual for real serious question that I would like you guys to comment on in the chat. Like, w if you're Devin Haney, like, what's going on in your brain? You know, like, related to this. Dude, Ryan Garcia is still only a plus 475 here, man. Uh, Devin's minus 700. Oroville. What's up, dude? One of the girls that populates uh, about a million stories that I've told on this channel is also from Oroville. Like, a lot of stories I've told on here. Um, ex thank you. Exactly, dude. Getting a chance to fight for a title, not making weight. It's not funny at all. Is it like, it's not funny at all. If you watch, like, seriously, if you watch the video that I did on this this morning when it first happened, that's what I said. I was like, dude, this ruins the fucking fight. I'm like, he does because even if he wins, he doesn't deserve to win. It would piss me off if he won. But that's my point is like him going on Twitter and, and handling it like this is like the funniest, like now that completely changed it because it's so ludicrous. It is so fucking ludicrous for him to get on Twitter and be all, yeah, I miss weight on purpose. What, I'm supposed to lose just to make weight? Like, that is the funniest shit ever, dude. It's so funny that I'll root for him. I, not really, like, root for him. Like, I would hate to see Devin Haney fucking lose to him now, but it would be, you know, let the world burn funny. You know what I mean? Yeah, boy. All the shout-outs. Always clip and shave the show. Thank you, dude. Yeah, I went to Chico State. So I got uh, one of my bet, like, actually, two of my, well, so... A girl from a bunch of my stories, like like a lot of the real debaucherous shit, is uh, that girl's from Oroville. Then one of my best friends is from Oroville, whose wife, I'm sorry, whose sister is married to Mike McDaniel, the coach of the Dolphins. That's how I'm. That's how I'm friends with McDaniel. Is one of my best friends from Oroville's little sister is married to McDaniel. Um, from or dude, Oroville just cranks them out, man. Lots of quality in such a small town. Uh. You eat the dude that got the belt. Who cares about a belt? I mean, yeah. But I think I think Devin Haney's gonna 
win. <laughs> you know, pretty sure Devin Haney's probably going to win. Uh, what else we got? Haney's a better fighter. Uh, Ryan has been working on his faults, which is mostly inaccuracy. I mean, dude, the thing is, though. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you guys the fucking I forgot to show you guys the actual like most important thing here. I'm embarrassed. So uh, let's take a look at this. Much more important thing on Twitter. So Ryan Garcia has missed weight by three pounds for tomorrow's bout with Devin Haney. Uh, and Brunch Boxing reported Tuesday that Ryan's team was concerned he would miss weight because of heavy drinking and lack of training. Heavy drinking, lack of training. Not good, dude. Not good. You know what I mean? And dude, a hundred percent boxing and MMA is a game of inches, especially boxing is a game of millimeters, man. It's a game of millimeters. There's like, it's uh because like MMA, there's so many different, there's so many different factors. Like that's why someone just comes in like pure boxing. They're going to get beat up, dude. MMA, you you overthrow a punch and you end up out of position. You can immediately like feel that you're out of position and transition to try to grab a leg or like you know. There's just a million different things you do. Boxing, it's fucking dude, bang bang. You know, it's it, you you make a mistake and they are going to tattoo you. And the guys like Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, these top level guys, they are looking for like margin of error that's like that big and they're going to put you down. You know what I mean? Uh, Any wins by decision. Ryan wins by knockout. I mean, I don't know. I know, dude. I saw this. I saw that. I saw that, man. That's Isn't that nuts? I haven't even looked into it. I don't know what the guy's like. I don't know if he like made a statement before or if he just did it, but that's crazy, man. Uh, Rottweiler, thank you very much for the super chat. It is incredibly generous. I appreciate you, dude. Thank you very much. Off topic, do you like the bars? Uh, who's only gone now? Second, is your being the best style of training? Wait, the bars. Hold on. Um, who's holding down? Is that like a oh, I see. Okay, hang on. I can't play it or else I'll um it'll get it'll get snaked the uh but the dude looks like prince so I'll be honest judging from what I'm looking at I probably will like it because I love 80s music. Uh second question in my opinion what is the best style of training going into MMA? Fuck that is such a complicated question dude like um Okay. So the best way that I can answer that question is if someone is great, like exceptional at one of the following wrestling, jujitsu, or Muay Thai, kickboxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai. If they're like, they have to be like elite at one of the, like, if you're talking like, you know, if you're taking a specific style of training and bringing it into MMA, they have to be elite at one of those three things. If they're like, okay at this or okay at that and then whatever and they want to be well it's like the it you it's been proven since time immemorial that the absolute best guys are are like top best in the world at one of those three things and then they build their game around that you know what i mean now in in uh oh this is easy goonies or lost boys goonies all day long um Exactly. Like Alex Pereira and kickboxing. It's great. And also, dude, I, I'm glad that we, uh, I'm glad that we uh, talked about, you saw me, you see, it didn't come up and say, why not? You should, and a girl, you should always come up and say, what's up to us. You for sure should have come and said hi. And thank you very much. You look beautiful in your picture. Um, but uh <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's supposed to be talking shit, but that's a funny fucking, that's funny, dude. Um, like in terms of martial arts for MMA, this is, this is my honest opinion is 
there is this new generation of people that's just like in the last five years emerging that have been training mixed martial arts forever. And they've been training mixed martial arts forever. Make no mistake about it. Mixed martial arts is its own martial art now. It didn't used to be that way, but it is now, right? Like you used to be able to train wrestling, jujitsu, striking, and then you kind of put it all together. Now you can just train mixed martial arts forever. I would say that it is to be determined whether or not a champion can emerge from that, right? And I'll tell you exactly what I mean, because common sense in the, in the development of the sport, because obviously at the very beginning, you have jujitsu beats everything. If no, like if people, if a few, if you go up against a person who has no jujitsu training, including wrestlers, and you're really good at jujitsu, you're going to win most of the time. I mean, if you're really good at jujitsu, let me just make that clear. Like someone who's like, you know, like good at jujitsu and you go up against someone who's great at wrestling, they're going to smash your face in, you know, but someone who's really elite at jujitsu and someone who has no jujitsu at all. Right. And not necessarily they'll always smash your face in either. Like if they really have no jujitsu, they're punching you and you're able to grab an ankle and then transition and attack. the. I mean, like it, it's not a foregone conclusion, but then people started learning the jujitsu submissions and, and then it turned into kind of like a wrestling era where the wrestlers that knew enough jujitsu to defend against it, they would win. Then people learned good enough takedown defense that now these grapplers are stuck on their feet and strikers are knocking them the fuck out. And then you got into the next era, which was kind of, uh, you had to be pretty good everywhere with one thing that you're elite at. And I think that's still where we are. I don't think that we've evolved past that. You know, um, there are only a handful of guys that you would say are like absolutely top notch elite at more than one thing who have had a lot of success. Charles Oliveira, his striking is pretty fucking elite, dude. His jujitsu is Charles. I could watch Charles Oliveira grapple literally all day long, every day. He's so fun to watch grapple, dude. Cause he's, I mean, out of anybody I've ever seen, he he appears to be attacking more at all times than anyone else. He has the perfect body for it. <laughs> he is very fun to watch grapple. Anyway, um, but I don't think thus far there has been someone who has only trained mixed martial arts who has emerged as an, a top contender because if they only train mixed martial arts, they are not going to be elite at any of those things because the people who are coming from their entire life training in a, in one specific discipline, they're going to be better than them. Bo nickel, another perfect example of elite at one place. I think he'll end up being a champion uh, depending on what happens with Hamzat. Hamzat is the exact same thing. Islam is the exact same thing. Volkanovsky was, uh, is the same is uh, Alex Pereira. Same Izzy, same. Um, what do we got? Like, Oh, uh, um, Sean O'Malley, same. I mean, all the champions fall into that category. Islam has great striking and grappling, but he learned great striking. He is a, an elite best in the world grappler. You know what I mean? So, uh, yes, me too. Jake, huge fan of surgical precision. Exactly. Exactly. Like I remember before I started my channel, um, for those of you who don't know, like the full story of when I started my channel, I started my channel because Chael put me on fan questions twice. And so, well, actually once he put me on once, I started fucking recording myself every day. I must've sent him like a thousand videos, dude. Like just trying to get him to put me on again. And when I watched them, I was just like, fuck, dude, these are pretty good. I feel like these are good. And then that's when I started my TikTok because of that. But, uh, but the first time Chell responded to me, he had like a, um, what do you call it? Like, uh, he had like a mass email that he used to send out to anybody who had like, uh, submitted videos and he's, and it was, uh, Izzy versus, um, Romero. And I had, this is right when my TikTok just started to pick up, but that's unrelated to this, but that's like what time frame it was. And he said, who do you guys like in that fight? You know, just like email engagement. And I wrote back and I was like, I will always take a surgical instrument over a big blunt object. And he responded to that. And he was like, that's really well said. And I was like, thanks, man. 
Thank you. I showed that to everybody. Like, Look, you guys, Chael emailed me back. Uh, but yeah, I agree. I agree with that uh, with that take, dude. Uh, but like, uh, I think Charles is the absolute best speech. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So one thing that's awesome that I am very grateful for is like, my jujitsu team has some of the most elite grapplers in the world on it. And they're my friends, obviously. So like I get to like ask them stuff, you know, where it's like, okay, how, how did this guy escape this or why this, 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 you know, stuff that I would just look at kind of like plain Jane jujitsu dude and be all, wow, it's unbelievable that Armin. So example that I'm talking about specifically is uh, the escape that Armin Sarukian had in the first round when Charles looked like he had that guillotine locked up. And in hindsight, this actually was not like super high level that I should have like that I missed, but I did miss it. And uh, Victor Hugo, who if if you're at all you know in grappling, you know exactly who that is. I I asked him, I was like, dude, was that how crazy was that escape? And he said he's like uh, Charles fell to the wrong hip, like he's like Charles fell to the wrong side. If he would have fallen to the other side, he would have finished it. And then I looked again, I'm like, fuck, he did, dude. He fell to the choke side instead of uh, the hip side. It's just like. That's why jujitsu is so fun and why some people are so good at it is like that like super organized detail brain. Like if you, I always tell people who have never done it before, I'm like, do you like spreadsheets? Like if they're athletic and if someone's an athlete, they like to fight and they're good at spreadsheets. I'm like, you're out of your mind not doing jujitsu because you're going to be fucking good. You're going to be really, 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 really good. Um, I suck balls at spreadsheets for the record. He chugged a beer on stage after the way. And that is so disrespectful, dude. That is fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the Ryan, the Garcia and Haney, dude. I mean, listen, like Haney, have you ever seen, I mean, like, have you ever seen Devin Haney look like, you know, like Devin Haney's incredible, man. He is so good. And, uh, hang on. Let me look something up here. I mean, bottom line, dude. I'm trying to see how many how many of his wins are by knockout. He so he's 30. I mean, he's, he's he basically knocks out half the guys he fights. Simple as that. And then so what I was trying to see is how many of his last few wins. So he's won. Damn, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or no, eight. He's won his last eight fights by decision. That's crazy. That's crazy. Eight straight decisions. Dominant wins, but decisions nonetheless. Damn, and then look at this. Okay, so... Um, okay, hang on. Okay, so... So eight in a row decisions. Then he wins by uh, retirement, which is a knockout as far as I'm concerned. Then KO. So he had two stoppages in a row. Then two decisions in a row. Then stoppage, stoppage, decision, stoppage. Okay, yeah. So like basically he won most of his fights by stoppage until the last eight. You know? Dude, that Lomachenko fight was very close. Very, very close. But you got to keep in mind, dude, even though Lomachenko had lost a few, like, dude, Lomachenko so fucking good. He is so good. So, like, you know, having a having a close, you know, a close decision go your way, uh, or, you know, against Lomachenko, that, like, that's not like, that's nothing to sneeze at. They're, the only fight where Lomachenko looked human was the one against Lopez. Lopez whipped his ass. And I feel like, I feel like that just like put this idea in everyone's head that like Lomachenko's not as good as he actually is. Is like, I don't know. You know, Lomachenko's fucking nasty, man. He's nasty, obviously. How old is Lomachenko though? He is 36. Yeah, I thought, I mean, listen, dude, I thought Lomachenko won too. Okay, let me rephrase that. I, if I was going to pick who won, I would have picked Lomachenko, but as a very seasoned fight fan, I was like, I have no idea who they're going to give this to. You know what I mean? Like having seen a million of these decisions, I have no idea who's, who they're going to give this to. And if one guy's undefeated, generally speaking in boxing, that's the direction it usually goes, you know, and especially, you know, when, uh, 
when it's the younger fighter. You know, like you guys know Devin Haney's 25, right? He's fucking 25 years old. Like this guy has a very bright future. That's the other dude. Here's the other thing, man. Here's the other thing is Ryan Garcia is putting a ton of attention on Devin Haney. Like all of this ends up being a net positive for Devin Haney because for him as an undefeated champion, who's, you know, like whatever, fucking 31 and 0, age 25, he just needs that breakout moment. And Ryan Garcia is way more famous than he is, even though Devin Haney's a better boxer. So I don't know. As long as he wins tomorrow, it's all good. And then that should uh that should set up Devin Haney against Tank, and that'll do that'll do bananas numbers. Uh Tad Ape, thank you very much for the super chat. Good sir. Pereira gave Hill like three high fives before knocking him out. How many did he did he need to realize he was back in the fight? Wait, how many did he need to realize he was back in the fight? Are you talking so are you talking about after uh sorry if you respond you don't have to super chat i'll 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 look but like are you asking um when herb dean came over and uh and alex stopped him are you saying like like how long was did he give him enough time before he you know cracked him or whatever is that what you're saying um because i think yeah you know it's funny me and gabrielle just filmed uh, we actually just filmed our most, uh, our most recent episode of, uh, play with matches, which by the way, everybody should go follow that channel. I will put the link in the description. And that's what we said. Like we were filming. We're like, why do both of us look so fucking shiny, man? Um, hang on. Wait, why is it not letting me do this? Ugh. Come on, dude. Boop. Boo doop doop doop. Doop 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 doop. There you go. Yeah. Guys, go follow that channel, dude. Um. Oh, he's talking about the measuring. What's up, Brandon? How are you, sir? Um Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I thought he gave exactly enough time after the, like, almost stoppage to where no one can complain about it. Like, exactly. And I love that because... And I haven't talked about this on the channel, actually. I talked about it on uh, the 10-7 MMA uh, show that I did where you can tell very clearly that by Alex's body language that he... Because, you know... He's setting him up for that knockout shot, 100%. You know, like that, like that, that dip and then the, the jab to the body. And he's conditioning him to, you know, he's conditioning him to at least think about that jab to the body. You know, it does, you know, like people think that because you get hit with a shot that's not meant to knock you out, it's not really meant to be like a fight ender, that that means that's not effective in conditioning reactions. And that's just not true at all. All it needs to do is just hurt enough, you know. Like just hurt a little bit and your body is by complete and total instinct going to move. Like that's really what, like in, in striking, especially you train muscle memory. Like that's what you do. That's what you're doing is you're just training muscle memory. And so you're like, and your brain on autopilot will be like, if there is a threat on the left side of my head, my, my, you know, my arm automatically does this, right? If someone's coming down the middle, you know what I mean? It's like, you just, you train muscle memory to react specifically to, you know, like threats coming in, you know, wherever, which is why mixed martial arts is so much more complicated than boxing because you have to worry about knees, kicks, punches, whatever. It's like a lot more for your brain to kind of get automatic on. And so, you know, all, all Alex is doing is conditioning them to think about, you know, to make their body conditioned to, you know, blocking, blocking the lower half of their, of their torso and then before they realized, oh, that's not where it's going, it's on their chin and they're unconscious. He did the exact same thing to Sean Strickland. He knocked out Strickland and, and um, Jamal Hill with the exact same thing. The punch was not the same, but let me actually see. Let me, I, I actually haven't looked this up, but I will bet you that the knockout happened at almost the same time 
uh, in the round because what I was saying uh, is Pereira stopped Dean. Wait, hang on. Okay, so Sean Strickland, two minutes. And yes, so he knocked out Strickland. Yeah, told you. He knocked out Strickland at two minutes and 36 seconds of the first round. He knocked out Jamal Hill in three minutes and 14 seconds. So like 45 seconds apart. He set them up exactly the same, dude. Right? He knew exactly how long it was going to... Like, he's he's setting them up and watching their reactions. Once he gets the reaction that he wants twice, he knows that the next one's going to... That the next one's going to land. You know? So it's like, he knew he had him set up. And that's why, you know, and Herb started walking over and he goes, whoa, no, 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 no. You know what I mean? Relax. Like, I've got him set. And he waited just long enough. And then he went, whoop, out. You know? Exactly. Super simple setup. Super simple. So simple, in fact, that, you know, it's like the, the reason why he it's so effective with him is because he's got that death touch, dude. You know what I mean? Like super simple setup, fucking jab to the body. You know what I mean? Like it's not fucking rocket science, dude. Jab to the body, jab to the body, jab to the body, get them conditioned to doing this. And then Oh, it's not going there. It's just that when he hits you in the head, you fucking, you see stars and go unconscious. You know what I mean? Or in both of their cases, you get knocked halfway out. And then he, in Sean's case, sends you to another dimension or in Jamal's case, punches you fucking 10 times on the ground. But, um, but he knew that he had, a, like he got the reactions that he wanted twice. So he knew the next one was going to land. Um, He had his foot on Hill's front foot, preventing him from backing out of range as well. I think, wasn't he up against the fence anyway? But yeah, I'm sure. I didn't, yeah, I don't know. I was, like I said, I was there. So like my my uh, opinion on what happened is never going to be as good as your guys' because you guys watch it. Like on TV, you guys see way better than I do. Um, Yeah, right, dude. This is is as simple what he's doing, man. There's no, like, that's the point is, I mean, you would think that people at this point will realize like, okay, if he's throwing that jab to the body, we know at some point he's coming up top. You know what I mean? Oops. This is what, yeah. John Jones versus Pereira would be fucking amazing, dude. That would be so amazing. And I, and I like that fight way more, even though like John, John Jones is a really good shot. You would think in the grappling, but the thing is people don't know, people don't know what Alex Pereira has in grappling. Everybody assumes that he doesn't have grappling, but I don't really understand why the guy clearly is a phenom. He's a martial arts phenom and he's been training jujitsu for like, uh, since I, I want to say 2015, I think someone said 2015, that's nine fucking years, dude. That's nine years. It, of training every single day and he's a world-class athlete if you ask uh like like i've heard danaher talk about this a bunch of times that it takes five years it takes five years for someone to be world-class if they if like if, it, if they you know make their life about whatever they're doing no matter what sport it is if they or not, not even necessarily be a sport but if they dedicate everything to it for five years and they have talent like that they can be world-class in five years five he's been doing it for nine dude nine you know what I mean? That just is what it is. It's like, I mean, yeah, like I said, it just is what it is. If someone's been like, if someone's been training anything, if, if someone's been training anything for multiple years and they do it very consistently, like they could get really good very, very quickly, you know? Now, again, he's going to be dealing with people who are world-class, but nine years training with Glover Teixeira, and if if he take if he took to it the way that he took to striking, I just don't understand why people think that he has he he for sure has some huge grappling disadvantage because we've never seen that. You know what I mean? Now I do agree. I agree with this. Aspinall, no good for him because Aspinall is world class. He's fucking huge, and he's super fast. He's great at submitting from the top. Like Aspinall's a Aspinall is a tough matchup for him for sure. Um. Yeah, dude, but Alex took Izzy down too, didn't he? Hang on, let me see something. Let 
Okay, so 281. Each of them, each of them got one takedown. Their fucking strike, their strike count is almost identical. Dude, this fight, yeah, this this fight was so close. That's crazy, dude. Look at this. So this is for the first fight. I mean, these stats are so close. Look at round one, 23 to 23. Round two is uh, Izzy lands three more strikes. Round three, Izzy lands a few more. Round four, Izzy lands a few more. And then round five, Alex beat him up and finished him. Um, But 287, no takedowns. Damn, Pereira landed 26 leg kicks on Izzy. I don't even remember that. Jesus, Alex Pereira landed 26 fucking leg kicks on Izzy in that fight. How do I not remember that? Izzy landed 18 of 61 head strikes. It's so crazy. Dude, listen, having been at that, you know, having been at that fight super close and then now having been at UFC 300, it's so crazy how when something really, really like, whoa, happens at the end of a fight, it's almost like it fucking erases your memory, dude. <laughs> like, it like literally just like erases your memory. Like, all you remember is the knockout from, uh, from Izzy. And, but also, again, let me actually take that back. Like I said, when you're there, fuck, I don't think I've ever watched that full fight now that I realize, now that I think about it. I don't think I've ever watched the Izzy and Poetan full fight since being there live. Damn, I need to watch that shit, man. Totally disagree. Aspinall is freakishly athletic and quick for that size. That's what I said. I said, I said fucking Aspinall is too good. We definitely do not. We, we agree. I said, ask I'll take him down and smash him. Jojo, I'm live, yo. But I will text you that. Speaking of black belts, you guys. Um, I'm going to. I will definitely watch that. Actually, I might, I'm going to do that right now. But, uh, okay, rate the knockouts, 1 to 10, Izzy versus Alex 2, Max versus Justin 300. Ten, I mean, 10 and 10. 10 and 10. 100%. 10 and 10. But in terms of, like, which was more, uh, you know, wait, on the Jones and Aspinall match, I didn't, I never said anything about it. Oh, you're talking to someone else. Okay, I got it. Uh, thoughts on the upcoming Ro Romanian fighter, uh, Zacker. Hang on, let me look at his face. Oh, you're trying to get me to say something? I don't even understand what that is. I am a dick Zacker. That's not even, what the fuck does that even mean? Dude, I, if you want me to read some dumb shit, it's not racist. Just tell me. I'll read it, dude. You pay me $5. I'll read whatever. You like, you don't have to hide a fucking, I am a dick Zacker. That shit's fucking stupid. You're going on timeout for such a dumbass joke. Oh, wait, you paid five bucks for it. Never mind. What does Zacker mean? Is that fucking, is that UK slang for a fucking, I lick ball sacks and suck dicks at jokes? Um, Zacker. Hey, do you, you guys spell fucking, you try to get someone to say sucker by spelling it Z-A-C-K-E-R? Fucking moron. Nice joke, dimwit. Anyway. Um. Uh, do a stand-up routine right now. How about I'll just do some crowd. I'll do some crowd work, dude. 
they, you know, put some more, hey, put some more super sick jokes through and I'll do some fucking crowd work. Um, Alex should fight Cyril gone at heavyweight. I love that fight. I love that fight. Uh, shovel faced plank. <laughs> That's pretty funny, dude. Do I agree that Nutcase Garcia is already top five sports characters in recent memory? For sure. If he wins, bro, legend. I don't think he's going to. Oh, yes, let's go. Let's go. Jokes, knock, knock. Who's there? Dude, don't tell me that spelling Zacker trying to make someone say sucker is British humor unless what you mean is British humor is fucking retardville. I know a lot of British people. They're all clever and smart. That's just some guy's a fucking retard. David, much love from uh, Austin, Texas, dog. Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? I'm a, I'm a who? Oh, this is going to be good. He's all, I'm a dick zacker. <laughs> um, there we go. Sacker. <laughs> well played, good sir. But I saw that coming, you know. <laughs> oh man he's keistering a bible dude not everybody knows what keistering means so i do though i do no i know british humor i'm saying spelling trying to get me to say sucker and spelling it z-a-c-k-e-r that's zacker that's fucking stupid no one's even gonna understand the joke that's my point like that shit's dumb should have said zucker and it shouldn't have been Romanian, you know? It should have been some other thing where you could have made it Zucker, not Zacker, because that ruins the joke and then lets me just torch you for being so stupid on the joke. Uh, not you, but, you know, whoever fucking dimwit wrote that. Uh, let's see who that was. That was... Uh... Oh, I missed this one. Hang on. Hey, Viegs. Uh, hey, Jesse, huge fan. Been following you since forever. How does Alex stack up against new Russian pride? <laughs> there you go. That's way better, dude. Except, like, Russian. You know a lot of Russians named fucking Jack, dude? You know a lot of Russians named Jack? Yeah, so it's Islam, Habib, uh, you know, Vasily. And Jack. <laughs> I know, but they got to do Z U. And you listen, and if you're going to do Romanian, you spell it like this, dude. Look it. Okay, look in the chat. That's how you spell it Zucker. Zucker with a U. You said he's Romanian, so I would have read it. I'm a Dick Zucker. Zacker. What a dimwit, dude. Exactly. Simple jack shit, dude. There we go. All right. We're going with the autocorrect. Thank you, hey, Viggs. Going with that autocorrect. I will accept that. I will accept that excuse. By the way, you guys, look at this. Look at this. Zuckerberg liked my comment on Instagram. Zuck liked my comment. And you want to know what else? I have been trying to see if Zuckerberg follows me, but that feature is broken on Instagram for me, for some reason. I can't figure out why. It is absolutely infuriating. Like, you know, he, him being such a huge fan of MMA, like, I, it's not impossible that he follows me.
I can't like no matter what I fucking type in, it won't filter my followers, dude. It is infuriating. The best joke I know. All right. Why don't you play poker in Africa? Because there's too many cheetahs. Bam, son. Uh, all right, I got to jump. I love you guys. If you get your booty hole tickled by Diddy, it's over, son. It's over. Um, Me and Zuck need to have a BJJ Max. That's a rough day at the office for Zuck, dude. He weighs 135 pounds. I weigh 200 pounds of absolute top pressure nightmare. That's... That's the six blades. That's six blades fucking game too. If I get on top of Zuck, he's going to have a rough day. He's a tough fucker though, dude. I really do. Like I respect Zuck's game. I've watched him in those tournaments. He let someone choke him unconscious before he tapped. That's just fucking gangster, man. Um, dude. He was keistering. He was keistering fucking Fabia, and Fabia wouldn't get out of there. Two hundred pounds of tanned flubber, he says. I'm glad. Two hundred pounds of sheer fucking absolute rock muscle Smashville. Just kidding. <laughs> I actually weigh one ninety six because uh, you know relevant to what we were talking about today in terms of cutting weight, dude, I, uh, we have a tanning bed in our, I'm um, not a tanning bed. I'm sorry. A, um, uh, sauna in our house. And I hadn't done one in fucking, I don't know, man, like probably two weeks. I got in there today and just was, I, 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 I couldn't believe how much I was sweating. And then I fucking got on the scale and I sweat out almost four pounds in 25 minutes. What's up? What's up? What's up, dude? You're all wondering if we're going to the tournament. We're not. It's not. It's not hot enough, dude. Yes, it is. No, it's not. No, it's out. If you're gonna come talk to me, come stand over here. Okay. Mommy said we can go if you want. It's not hot enough to go to the pool, yo. <laughs> no, it's not. Trust me, it's hot outside. I was just outside. Are you gonna train tomorrow morning? I don't know. My foot hurts. She doesn't fake injuries. I generally think she's faking, and then I always end up getting proven wrong. Dude, she, when she was, how old were you when you had the broken arm? And we didn't. Seven. Dude, when she was seven, she's like, my hand hurts, daddy. And we're like, shut up, Giselle. They took me to the doctor. Stop faking. We're like, stop faking. And it was broken. <laughs> it was broken, dude. She, and she'd been complaining about it for how long? Like three weeks. No, like, no, three days. No, 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 no. Mom put the cap, the brace on me the day after, and then I woke up and it was broken. Dude, she's getting so good now, too. But uh, she's being a baby about her uh, her leg. Giselle, how tall am I? I'm going to say what you say. This is a lie, guys. He's 5'10". It's a lie? What am I really? 5'9". That's not accurate. Yeah. I might be more than 5'9 and less than 5'10 by a hair, but I am not fucking 5'9". Yes, my daughter does. My daughter does jujitsu. Yes, she's the one. She's the one that uh, wins tournaments and shit. Y'all, guess how tall I am? I'm five six. Um, I don't know how tall Rogan is. I like I said, I'm, uh, I am a hair under five ten. Daddy, 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 daddy. What, dude? Can it's not hot, dude. It is daddy. It's not. It's seventy three degrees, but hot. See, seventy three like, degrees. Feels like, it's like right there feels like eighty. Go down. Giselle, down, seven, down. It, it feels like 73 degrees because it's 73 degrees. Okay, Giselle, I don't need to see what the computer okay, says. I can go step outside and tell you what it feels like. What? I'll fight you. You'll fight me. I'll fight you. Scary. <laughs> me, and just, me and Mommy were going to go get tattoos today. Ew. You guys don't, can do it. Do you want to go see us get tattoos? No, I want to go to the pool with Piper. It's not yes, with who? Who's Piper? The one who really likes basketball. The one that oh, she's a good influence. I know. BJJ Nogi, me versus Rogan for sure. 
Rogan Rogan has uh Rogan is a Machado black belt and a and a um and a uh 10th planet black belt. He has two black belts. Rogan is legit, dude. Not to mention he has a like a he has the same body type as mine to where like all the stuff that I do is very going to be very hard against him, dude, because he's like tight and compact. Um, it's very hard to isolate limbs with dudes that are built like that. What's up? And we have no necks, so we're very hard to choke. What? I don't. Do you think that I didn't hear that? You think I didn't like? I didn't get that you want to go to the fucking pool. Yeah, Jeez. Like <laughs> what? Go you're not going to the pool. I'm gonna jump right in. I did that on Saturday, and it was. Oh, you're gonna jump, so your ankle's fine. No, so you can train I'm tomorrow. Gonna... So you can train tomorrow. No, I can't jump. I'm gonna like get in the pool because you're so injured. Rottweiler, what's up, dude? Thank Remember you very you, much. You injured your elbow for like three years. What you mean when I had my elbow blew up like this, or are you talking about when I tore my bicep tendon? Mm, when it was like that for like three years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mean the thing I had to get steroid shot into to make it go away and get it drained? Yeah, well, that was like for like three years. I I like, st still trained. I trained on it. No, you didn't. That is yeah. No, you didn't. I trained with it. No, you didn't. The only thing that I didn't train through was when I tore my bicep tendon. I didn't train for three weeks. And then I started tying it into my belt and trained back defense until it was healed. Mm. Remember? That's a new story. That's a new story. Mm -hmm. That's not what happened? Nope. He's lying to you. Why is my back defense so good then? How come I'm... You're big and strong. Oh, oh yeah? Just strong people are good at not letting people ever choke them? No, it's because I trained turtle and back defense only okay, for a month you did not sit and a half. You sat out for like a year. I set out for three weeks. A year? A year. A year. Yeah. A year for a partially torn bicep tendon. Yeah, you were faking. And didn't you get out? Can we go to the pool? Maybe. Get out of here. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this thing up in a second anyway. Bye bye. Just want to say your opinion matters. I know a good amount about MMA and when someone knows more, I just shut up and listen. Much love from Tucson, Arizona. By the way, Bo Nickel is going to be the champ. Mark Morris. I totally agree. And thank you very much, uh, Rottweiler B. Dude, uh, we were just talking about that girl in Arizona who's getting charged to for uh, and is facing 16 years in prison for, uh, you know, pretending that Trevor Bauer raped her. Yeah, no, Rob, it's not a matter of let her go to the pool. She wants me to go to the pool with her we probably will though no dude you have to let your kid cook you man it's not my job to win arguments it's my job to teach them how to not give a fuck when people break their balls so that when they go to school and people break their balls they don't get their feelings hurt since that's the only way that kids assess who's like you know kids are like piranhas dude that's why I, that's why me and Gabriel always tease our kids, dude. Is so they get used to getting teased. So when people tease them at school, they're like, "Oh, is that right? Fuck you!" And then I'm gonna go, "Oh, they're cool kids." Anyway, um, all right, I gotta jump, and I love all of you guys. Peace.